Hi, I'm Gil Benbrook from Phoenix Stages and TalkingBroadway.com, and I'm here with Liz Fallon and Jamie Parnell, who play Fanny Bryce and Nikki Arnstein in an Arizona Broadway Theater's production of Funny Girl, which opens in a couple weeks on October 14th and runs through November 13th. We're here in the beautiful ABT Auditorium as they're building the set behind us, so you might hear a few drilling noises <laughs> as we're having a little discussion here. All right, so Liz, Funny Girl mm -hmm. was a huge hit on Broadway. Launched the career of this little person known as Barbara Streisand. Who? Um, <laughs> who, who, even though she didn't win a Tony, she was beat out by Carol Channing. It's a good way um, to go. But she did win an Oscar for playing Fanny in the film version of Funny Girl. Mm -hmm. Made huge hits from a couple of songs from the show, People being the biggest hit, I would say. But for people who don't know about the musical, what, what, would you tell them what the musical is about? Um, well, so it follows the story of Fanny Bryce, who was a real person, which I didn't really know back when I was younger. Um, but it's her her rise to fame and um, follows the relationship of her and Nick Arnstein. Um, and it's just a, it's a great classic Broadway musical. It has all the big production numbers and the famous songs. As you said, people don't run to my parade. Um, but it is just, they're real people. That's what I really love about this story. It's the story of unconditional love and the many forms that that takes and they're not I feel like a lot of times with classic musicals you get boy meets girl you know they fall in love and then there's a big wedding like yeah. there is a wedding there is a love story but they are really there's a lot of ups and downs yeah yeah and they're just they're real people they're flawed but they love each other so deeply and it's just it's a beautiful story so so have either of you appeared in this show or in these parts before I haven't, no. no. So we're really fortunate. Brand new. Yeah. Happy for the opportunity. <laughs> well, I, I'm, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a great show. Yeah. Um, so while most people may identify Streisand, Barbara Streisand, with the show, mm -hmm. I mean, like you said, it's really about Fanny Bryce. Right. Um, and Nick Arnstein, both of who were real people. Mm -hmm. um, um, and uh, Fanny Bryce was a huge, uh, huge vaudeville performer mm -hmm. with the fault with the, uh, um, the folly. So what kind of research did you do on Fanny and what can you tell us about Fanny Bryce? Well, like we were saying earlier, usually for people who don't know, um, you create the world of your character outside of the play. So where are they from? What are they like? What was their family like? So it was fun for Fanny. Um, there's a couple of biographies out there, but I read um, Fanny Bryce, the original Funny Girl, and it was um, interesting to see the life before and after the show that is very well depicted in the book. And um, you know, how Fanny started to get into theater. There was a story about they were on a ship going to Europe um, and they were on like the middle class deck and she would go to the upper class deck and try to like look really sad and hungry and like mug, which she called it. And then the uh, rich passengers would end up giving her fruit and candy. And so she's like, oh, this is, this is something I'm good at. So things like that. Um, yeah, so that biography was very helpful for me. And then um, there is a lot of footage of Fanny actually performing and um, she was known, like I said, for the much who would do this kind of face. <clears throat> so it's cool to see videos of her in the Follies, not in the Follies, but in yeah. situations yeah. like the Follies and um, some of her baby Snook stuff was there too. So yeah, there's audio recordings. Yeah, too, yeah. So you can actually hear her. Kind of get an idea of yeah. the world that which she is, was in. Which is slightly different than the way that Barbara Streisand portrayed yes. her, right? Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So you can put your own stamp on Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Find a good middle ground. <laughs> so Jamie, you play Nick Arnstein, Nikki Arnstein. Nikki. Um, so why don't you tell us about your character and what kind of research did you do on Nikki? Um, I went into it thinking, you know, much as what Liz said is, you know, you don't necessarily have to create the world all by yourself um, for this role. And so I started researching and realized the, the Nick in real life, however, <laughs> differs a great deal than the Nick on the page and on the stage. Um, he wasn't, I personally think the Nick <laughs> that I am portraying is a very, he's a wonderful, genuine um, man who just happens to have a very awful monkey on his back. Hmm. Um, well, I think, and, you know, in the stage version, Nick is also slightly different than the film version. Oh yeah. yeah. So people who For sure. only know the film are going to, probably come in and see a very different oh yeah you know, I mean and table. Omar Sharif yeah. it's just I mean he looked very much like Omar Sharif by the way doesn't he thank it's you <laughs> very much <laughs> I think it is the mustache <laughs> um but uh I mean no one can be Omar Sharif he was yeah. just he was so incredibly charismatic and you couldn't help but love him um so I think 
Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the Nick on the stage, um, he, he does have that um, affable nature and um, people are drawn to him, but it's also brought up a fair amount within the script, supporting characters um, and Fanny's support system, I'll say, well, if, if you want to know what I think about Nick, if you want to know what I think about Nick, yeah. I think the audience is seeing Nick through the rose-colored glasses that Fanny sees him through. So, As you opposed see, to yeah. her mother and her exactly. mother's friends. friends yeah. mm -hmm. Who see yeah. him probably more through a lens of concern, yeah. you know. Um, so, I started researching, and then I quit <laughs> researching fairly quickly because I realized, well, you know, I, I'm researching a completely different human being yeah. than than one I'm portraying. Well, I wonder because <clears throat> in sort of in a, in a interesting way, it's sort of like the creators made Nick to be the antagonist, sort of the yeah. piece. You know, Fanny has her rise to fame, but then she has to have some hiccups along the way. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like they they it seemed to me at least they sort of changed him just a little bit to make him like you said um, from the interactions that you know the your mother, Fanny's mother, Fanny's mother's mm -hmm. friends have. Um, you know, so it's interesting that they did that, even though he was a real person, mm -hmm. um, you know, to at least have a little drama in the show. So well, oh, yeah. in real life, it was even worse. They he was, cleaned oh, it up oh, really? and made oh, okay. it better. Yeah. Like in the he show. He was not a good guy. Okay. No. I, I found very little yeah. to sympathize with. Okay. You just looked at what he did and said, oh, and it was, <laughs> you're a rotten guy. Yeah, yeah. it was Fanny's daughter's husband, Ray Stark, who, I think that's his name, mm -hmm. yeah. um, who, you know, helped make the musical, yeah. mm -hmm. and they were saying that they were trying to give, not an accurate depiction of Fanny's life, but an entertaining spin on it, so audience would enjoy it, because I, I think it's hard, if they depicted Nick like they do, if they didn't depict it like they do in the musical, and they did like how Nick was in real life, I don't know how you could love him, because yeah. they, there are just so many and he was cheating on her too, and then he hid out in their apartment, and like he it just- He just used her like, for everything she had, and- Well, that's unfortunate. It is sad, but that's not this show, so <laughs> no. that's good. <laughs> no, my Nick is not like that at <laughs> all. He loves her deeply <laughs> and selflessly. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we've talked about Streisand. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, there's a huge elephant in the room when, when playing this part. Right. So did you have any trepidation when you were offered the role? I mean, a little, sure. With, okay. Yeah, we were talking about this yesterday because Barbara and Omar are such icons, especially with this piece. Even if you wanted, even if our goal was to put the movie up on that stage, we would fail. So there's almost a freedom in that in knowing that you can't create those performances and I don't think we really want to because I think that we can tell this story in our own way while still tipping our hat to Barbara and Omar mm -hmm. because some of those choices are so legendary, so of course they're gonna be in there because that, yeah. you, there's like these little bullet points you wanna hit, you know. Um, so I won't sing people exactly the same way, but there are, you know, people are still in there and there are little things that even Clayton has directed us to do mm -hmm. that are like, oh, that's when she goes like this in the movie, like that's in there, you know, little things yeah. like that. So, so. Maybe sort of nice little homages. Exactly, around. exactly. But, if you know, if you wanted the movie, you'd just go watch the movie. So, right. but, but the great thing, like like I said in the beginning, is is that this sh the show has there's there's songs in here that aren't in the movie. Mm -hmm. Right. There's different scenes in here that yeah. that were different in the film. Mm -hmm. So it is while it's the same story, it's it's very it's a different. It's story. new as well. Yeah. yeah. There's mm -hmm. a bigger relationship between Ma, um, Mrs. Bryce. You get to learn more about her mm -hmm. and her best friend Eddie who is in the movie, but you yeah, don't learn, brief, yeah. yeah, but he has his own numbers and yeah. you get to really learn about his relationship with Fanny, which also helps color her relationship with Nick. Um, yeah, it's- so There's a lot it's, of interesting stuff where if you've, seen, so if you've seen the film, this is a whole new experience. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. All right, so talking about the original um, musical from the, you know, which was in the 1960s on Broadway, it mm -hmm. ran for over three years on Broadway. Mm -hmm. It has never been revived on Broadway, unlike you know, Hello Dolly is coming back to Broadway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like all these musicals mm -hmm. have been done. Some of them, like Fiddle on the Roof, have been back like three or four times yeah. now. So, uh, Jamie, why do you think that is? Why do you think this show isn't done that much? And why it has yet to come back to Broadway? Um, <laughs> I think it's a bit of one of those, it's a perfect storm of reasons. There's so many that just by themselves could probably, you know, put it out of the running to be, uh, to be revived, but 
for one, you have the Barbara issue. The Barbara element. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Barbara element. Um, people will judge a performance against that, especially unless you have um, the, the luxury of the time away from her doing it. Yeah. And Barbara has, you know, if Barbara had done this movie and then did a series of had you know horrible career moves and <laughs> faded out of the public's eye mm -hmm. i think that would be a different yeah. story however she stayed in popular culture it's, till now oh, i mean yeah. she just released a new album she was, like yeah. Yeah. Weeks ago. yeah exactly yeah. so um <clears throat> she's consistently there she still sings people you know yeah. in her concerts that's still there so i think you have that to sort of contend with um and i'm sure that people are scared to how do you stand up to such a great performance? Yeah. No, no, that um, makes sense. And also, we were speaking before about just getting it off the ground, the original show. There were so many issues about the writing and how are we going to portray this story? How are we going to do it? And now when they're doing revivals, especially if it's like a, you know, a biography piece, essentially, which this kind is a biography is, yeah. piece, yeah. Um, they, we were talking to Clayton, the director, and he, um, he said, you know, now they want to show the real story. They want it more gritty. They want it more this. And that was the reason it almost didn't get done three times before, before it originally premiered on Broadway, because they were trying to show more of it. And her family said, no, we don't want this scene. So I think there's probably those issues as well. Um, and I think for not even being revived on Broadway, but just being produced anywhere, you have, you have to find the right person to portray such a an enigmatic character fanny bryce i mean was a truly unique woman she got away with in real life and in the stage version she got away with some things i mean <laughs> yeah. you, you look For at the, the things she period. said yeah. Yeah. and you were like any other person you know ziegfeld would have said no get out, of here. get out of here who are you but she had that thing and i think it's not an easy task to find someone who can pull that off. And so I think speaking they did. of that, Liz, this yeah. is the in the past like a little over a year. This is like the third musical <clears throat> here at ABD that you've been quote unquote the female lead in. Mm -hmm. um, so you did Sweet Charity. Mm -hmm. You were just Fiona and Shrek, yes. and now you're here. So what what is it about ABT that keeps you, keeps bringing you back or keeps you coming back here? Um, I think it's like a family is the best reason that I can say. They're so welcoming and they, professionally, they treat us so well. They put on a, amazing productions um, and the people are just the best. I mean, Jamie and I, Jamie was in my first show and now he's one of my best friends. It's just, you create these relationships here and you're fulfilled personally and professionally and of course you want to come back. So yeah. As long as I keep getting opportunities, I'll keep coming back. So. And, they have, and they have really good food here, by yeah. the way. Yeah. <laughs> and dessert. The salmon. <laughs> I'm addicted to the salmon. <laughs> All right, so I know you guys just started rehearsals mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. a, a little over, I guess about a week and a half ago, right? Yeah. Two weeks ago now? So is there any specific moment that you've like been drawn to? It's like, well, this, I love this moment, or I can't wait to play this on stage for, you know, in front of an audience. Mm -hmm. Is there any one specific thing that, that has struck you? Jamie. Sorry. Mm. Do you want me to go first? I, yeah. Yes. <laughs> As of now. Um, I, you know, you always have those ideas when you're reading the script beforehand, like, oh, this is going to be so much fun. But it's, it's, what's fun is when you actually put it on your feet. And I, um, I realized in the rehearsal, there was a moment when Nikki, who, you know, he's, he's like that, the, star football player in high school mm -hmm. who is really a good guy but sometimes doesn't do necessarily the most correct things yeah. um and he's just playing the hand he's dealt you can't fault him for it he's deep down he's a good guy but he's just playing along with fanny and all of a sudden she does something that strikes him as okay now you're now i'm i think i might have met my match you know he's he's an incredibly smart man and he doesn't get faced with that very often and so there was a moment in rehearsal I think it was actually the first day that I kind of stepped back and I was like I am so excited to see what <clears throat> because of this moment that we just did what the moment will be that Nick actually realizes that this is something he's willing to jump all in 
for because you know what happens but what is that moment going to be because i don't think i'm going to have to fight to try to find it i think okay. the moment will present itself with what she was doing and and with the script it was it just like that so was natural. oh my gosh it was yeah it was a really cool moment it was kind of like an out of body experience nick was experiencing something completely different than what i was and i got to step back and go Ooh. oh i wonder what comes next this is fun so cool. yeah what about you liz um I think right now I really love You Are Woman, I Am Man. That's, I, it's just a lot of fun. Um, but I, obviously because it's fun, but I think that we might have some more favorite moments. We're about to block the second half of Act Two today. <laughs> All the same time. <laughs> <laughs> um, and while it's not the happiest <clears throat> ending, I think that some of those moments are also gonna be a highlight of the show. I don't know, it's, mm-hmm. we haven't, we've only run Act One once. So until we really get in the, I can finally put down my script or I'm not like, wait, what side do I go to? Like once we finally get in the flow of things, I think I might be able to figure out what my favorite is. But okay. as of right now, I think you were a woman. I am man. It's my favorite. All right. So we talked about how the show hasn't been done in a long time. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's 60 years old. Mm-hmm. In the 60s. Um, and it's set, it's set around World War I. So why, why do you think this musical still like, or what, why do you think the musical re- will resonate with a modern audience? Or what do you hope an audience will take away from it since it's really a, a period piece? Yeah. Um, I, while it may be period, I think the themes in the show are timeless. This unconditional love we keep talking about. I think that people are really going to relate to the story on stage while it may not be their exact circumstances. Everyone has had that love in their lives, whether it be a lover or a parent or a friend and the sacrifices you have to make or want to make for that person and those themes aside I think it's also just a classic Broadway musical and I know it's one of the reasons I started doing theater was because of the show one of, I mean not the only reason but you know what I mean um, and there have the great songs and there's great production numbers and hi to that set like it's gonna I think it's just gonna be a great night of theater and and, and plus, it's a beautiful story. Yeah, and plus mm-hmm. something that most people probably haven't seen on stage before. Exactly, exactly. Like, put down your movie and come yeah. see it. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, mm-hmm. it's a cool opportunity to see it on stage. All right, so Liz Fallon, Jamie Parnell, and Funny Girl at Arizona Broadway Theater just opens October 14th and runs through November 13th.